Hi, welcome to Comic Talk. I'm Josh. And I'm just a poor boy. Nobody loves me. <laughs> We're doing our poll list review. Uh, this is for February 3rd. And we've got six titles, so we're going to hop in. The Vision number four, Doctor Strange number five, uh, Scarlet Witch number three, Sheriff of Babylon number three, Paper Girls number five, Batgirl number 48. So we're going to start off at the front of that list, and we're going to talk about The Vision. Uh, this is issue number four with King, Walta, and Bel Air. So Viv and Vin return to school. Mm-hmm. And um, some shit happens with uh, Virginia. Yeah. Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown? Charlie Brown. Can we start with Charlie Brown? Do you have any idea what I mean? I have no idea what you mean. The the opening sequence. Oh, yeah. Was <laughs> yeah. Straight out of Charlie Brown. Uh, but then, yeah, supervision style. Like, uh, almost like a speak and spell. Yeah, it was so... So weird. It made me laugh so hard when I read it. Uh, something about that simple comic strip that we've seen like a hundred thousand times, but but then broken down into its tiniest elements and discussed from like a almost maybe a Kantian perspective. I don't know. Like a mm -hmm. you know pulled into this philosophical realm is just so the vision. It's yeah. Everything that I, this book is. I love that about it. I mean, just every stupid little thing is, like you said, broken down into like, uh, you know, what is your motivation for doing this? And, you know, what does that motivation stem from? And does that help them assimilate with people? Yeah. And because if it does, that's something that they should try to do. Right. You know? But you can use that as a motivation to do things like kick your sister in the head. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> and then it, it they play on it later where she responds and and uh kind of cheats at at the game that they're playing and uh comes back at him in like this very kid like way but in w with a depth of understanding that no child would ever have. It's yeah. uh, really brilliant stuff. I I have loved this series. The first 3 have all been good. I think this one's the best one yet. Mhm. Mm I don't think we've really had a bad thing to say about it. I mean, the the only thing that you could maybe criticize about it would be the art, but it's so appropriate for the book that mm -hmm. you just can't really even do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and when we get these moments too, with the art being the way it is, where it's uh, kind of a softer Marvel House style, when you get these really creepy, weird moments, they really stand out. Oh, too. like the end. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That's the other thing about this book is it's unexpectedly heavy. Like, yeah. shit just comes yeah. out and you're like, fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, in your mind, that's mm -hmm. all you can do is just, oh my God, oh my God. It's almost uncomfortable to read at some point. It is I love that about it. Like, yeah. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It's a good book. And I, I don't even want to talk about it that much, which is funny. We're doing, like, this review show, right? We're supposed to be critics. And I don't want to critique it too far because I want it to be such a surprise for the readers. It's... These are one of these, this is one of those books where I just want to say, don't be an idiot, go get it and read it. I don't think anybody that watches our show would not like it. Right. Like this, the all new, all different Marvel, I think looking back, this is going to be the book that people say like that was all new, all different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. that was really what they were going for. They achieved it with this book. Yeah. If it's not on your pull list, put it on there because yeah. it's, it's awesome. Yeah. Really good stuff. And there's even like some superhero stuff, like they fight like a gigantor yeah. or yeah. whatever. And he's like on the phone with his wife at the time. <laughs> yeah. like, I understand your motivations for this question. However, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of fighting Giganto right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fantastic stuff. And yeah. and like you said, it goes so dark. And uh, but there's also like that nice, uh, cute little high school romance scene too. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. it just got everything in it. It's so good. When you read this, is the back to the speak and spell thing that I said earlier I think it's because every time there's narration in this like that's the voice in my head mm -hmm. is like a or maybe like the the fitter happier from Radiohead mm -hmm. like that yeah, yeah definitely mm -hmm. very very good stuff man he's really nailing it with this one go read it get it yeah. Tom next. King man yeah. Tom King Doctor Strange next this is Aaron Bacallo and Townsend this is uh, issue number five so empirical 
I assume that's how they want it pronounced. Yeah. Uh, come to kill all the magic and stuff. And we learn about his, his batteries that he has, which is kind of creepy. Super creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't know he has them either, right? Like, uh, which is cool. We're getting, like, some stuff with... Uh, Wong. Yeah, so we're actually getting some stuff with Wong now and learning a little bit more about him. And, and he's maybe not as... Uh, subordinate as you might yeah. assume what he does in his free time it's almost like those adventures of uh or those episodes of adventure time like when they have the bmo ones and they're just like kind of creepy you know <laughs> okay yeah it's just like adventure time yeah yeah, yeah. which we're doing soon we are you see what i did there yeah i do good job uh man this one is dark heavy mm-hmm uh, but also poetic. It's this is the most like Weird World was that I've seen Aaron do so far since yeah. then. It's not coming in fucking Thor. I'll tell you that much. Right. Do uh, you think you're maybe getting some of that vibe from? I mean, I don't think the artwork is comparable, but no. just like the vibe that you get from it. Yeah. Well, that's that's what I mean. Is is it's this one has a lot of. Uh, narration near the second half mm -hmm. uh, that has a similar tone to it yeah. where he's, you know, a lamenting warrior kind of thing. Yeah, uh, very limited dialogue in that part of it. Pretty cool. Uh, Bacalo is still killing it with this art. It's really it's cool so looking stuff. And like I say, I love the fact that this artist has been so, like, fresh and different, even though he's, like like such a veteran mm -hmm. uh, consistently you know it's not like we have like the cool issue here and there but everyone like you can tell he puts so much time mm -hmm. effort and care into it like yeah this has to be his pet project oh yeah definitely and also um there's a big team of inkers on this that we couldn't even possibly I mean, it's like seven or eight guys and the inking is just awesome mm -hmm. the inking is so cool on this book uh, and without it, it would not be nearly as cool uh, looking. So uh, that big team of inkers deserves the credit, I think, a lot on this. It, I mean, Bacalo's doing cool stuff, but sure. the inking is really what sells it, I think. Yeah. I wonder if they have, like, a different one for each of the styles that they're kind of bringing together. It so could be. It could be. Because there's, yeah, there's that one section where it's even... Like, here's this place, and here's this place for each panel, and they each feel different, so mm -hmm. it could be, yeah. It's an uh, interesting approach, if so. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, all in all, I'm really happy with this book as well. It, Me too. It, Marvel's got some cool stuff. Uh, we're not always super big, like, big two fanboys. We, we kind of talk a lot of garbage, it seems, a lot of time on, like, the large companies like Marvel and DC, but... Uh, I think on both sides, if you if you narrow down, you find the the B list stuff that they let people go crazy on. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get some cool stuff, and I and I think thing, both man. of these are are good examples of that. I almost wish they didn't make it so hard to find this this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, which I mean, I guess after you've been doing it for a while, it's one of those things where you see a title that you assume nobody would care about, and you're just like, oh, there's my there's my guy right there. Right. You know? But I mean, why can't Iron Man be this good or right. just like one of those like big you know like five or ten names that they push mm -hmm. out you know just take some chances with those and maybe you know if somebody just wanders into a comic shop like you know people do and says oh well I'll check out this because I like the movie or whatever and then they're actually impressed you know with the quality right. of the comic and it's not what they thought comics would be mm -hmm. I mean it could be cool yeah I that's interesting that you say that I was reading online some people talking about the DC reboot and what you'd like to see. And a lot of people were talking about like what characters they want to see, what books they want to see brought back up. Uh, but it really got me thinking like what I want to see from DC is exactly what you were talking about, where they give people like Tom King or their Jason Aarons, which is probably like uh, guys like Stephen Cameron and Stephen Cam Stuart Cameron and, uh, which a lot of maybe uh, Mark Russell and you know guys like that like give them the big titles right mm -hmm. we're we're seeing Tom King the rumor is that he's going to be on Batman so 
maybe that's what they're they're thinking. Like, give these guys the big titles and let them do the things they normally do on these little books that that don't sell because nobody picks them up. Right. Nobody nobody buys Prez because what the fuck is Prez, right? Yeah, you look at it and it looks like some Kim Possible shit. So it's like, why the fuck would I want to read that? I'm an adult male. You know? Right. So the the new people that are coming in that everybody is trying to court, they go, oh, well, I'll get Superman. Or I've heard of Justice League. I'll buy Justice League. And then they get it and then it's like kid shit. It's, mm-hmm. it's for 15-year-olds, right? Uh and all the neat stuff that would actually get people to come back are these things that only people in the know like you and me go and buy. Sure. So why not put all the people writing that stuff, put them on the main titles, uh, so people will buy those and, and see like DC's doing fresh new stuff and they'll get, mm-hmm. you know, let those people take some chances and maybe sure. they'll get some media. Uh, but I mean, we d- you can't lose sight of the fact that, that a lot of people that read comics are super into that shit. Like, mm-hmm. you know the ad we keep seeing and... DC comic books for uh, the threat so big and takes all of the Superman to handle it. Like, you know, some people are into that shit. Right. But I think you can very obviously make those titles like that. Mm-hmm. Like, if regular Superman was like, you know, cool shit, like fucking Grant Morrison came back and wrote it or something like that, you know, and then you had like uh, blah, 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 Crisis with four Supermans, you know, it would very easily like delineate those two. And then somebody who's going to want something that's more like action packed and just trope heavy and all that shit is going to say, oh, well, this one has more fucking Superman, so I'm going to read that. Yeah, give that stuff crazy titles and, yeah. you know, Superman versus the world. And it, yeah. they'll go and buy that shit because it sounds exciting. And, right. and they go, oh, that's the one with all the crazy shit going on, right? Uh, and then make the main ones good stories, things that adults would want to read. I don't character dramas. Yeah, right. I just don't understand. Uh, and all the people that buy Superman because it says Superman will buy it anyway. Like, yeah, it doesn't all, matter. All of the you know people that just follow characters, they'll just keep buying it. Worst case scenario, two years later they'll be like, man, these last twenty four issues of Superman have been terrible. Yeah, I really hated. Superman 1 through 27 that I bought anyway. They were so bad. I didn't even read them because they were bad. Yeah, so I don't understand. And Marvel the same way. Like, put these guys on the cool shit. And yeah. Well, they do have Jason Aaron on Thor. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. There's that. That's true. And they think, Marvel at least, I guess both sides, they think they're putting their cool people on the stuff. Which is the problem. Like, they don't, realize that they yeah. suck but it's the the people doing the good stuff or the people in charge of making the decisions or the people doing the titles that are big mm-hmm. are guys like Jeff Johns and Jim Lee and Did he, um, Michael Bendis and on both sides it's the guys who are in charge they're saying well I'll do this one because I'm so good yeah which is the problem uh well let's move on we're getting off topic and this is going to be a long week anyway so let's talk about another marvel title this is scarlet witch with robinson dylan martin and visions potato famine Mm -hmm. uh steve dylan what the fuck is that about he took too many naps i guess (laughs) had to knock something out at the last minute i don't this is the way steve dylan work always looks Mm -hmm. uh he did punisher max Okay. Which was really badass, uh, and he was perfect for it. This he is not perfect for. This makes no sense to me, and it, frankly, it, it ruins the title for me. It it there's no synergy between the writing and the art here anymore. Uh, I don't even know if I would call it synergy before. I mean, the the art was the one thing that I liked about it mm. prior to this, and so now that's gone. It, to me, this just feels like another, like we were talking about, like the shitty Marvel books. Like it just feels like another one of those. It does now to me too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is. It even lost some of its like dime store ishness. You know, right. like it doesn't even have that vibe anymore. It's right. just like just a regular ass Marvel book. Right. And it's Robinson. Like we know he can do cool things. Yeah, I don't. So is... I don't know what's happening here. Like the very last two pages, it looks cool yeah, again and cool. is interesting. If it looked like that, the whole issue, I would still be into this, even though I didn't really care that much for the writing this time. Mm. I, I liked the first two issues. I thought they were on the nose in an interesting way that made it fun and, and 
cool, but th this one mixed with the art is a total dud for me, to be honest. Cool. And I'm sure you're still on the same boat, right? Yeah, it's done. The Sheriff of Babylon. This is the second King book with Jared's Gerad Gerods on. I wonder if that guy has a Twitter. We can ask him how to pronounce that. Gerard. <laughs> Gerards. Uh, Sheriff of Babylon number three. This is a Vertigo book. Really, lots of shit happened in this one. Uh, mm -hmm. I guess the central plot point for a lot of it is that that dude Ali Al Fahar died, and they're investigating that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, everything's coming together now. All these threads are starting to tie together. Uh, we understand why we've been following Christopher and Sophia for the first time. Mm -hmm. I mean, clearly they were both big figures in what was going on, but now we understand why. They're... But I think that may be a new development. You think so? I don't, I'm not so sure. Mm -hmm. it, that's, that much is not clear, but what we know is that they connected right. together and were not just two separate people that had no interaction. Sure. Uh, I'm liking this book more and more with each issue. Yeah, me too. The first one, I was really not sure about it. it was, I mean, I was like on, even on the borderline of liking it or disliking it. And I love the shit out of this one. Yeah, it me too. Great. It was really good. Yeah. Uh, Either the plot twists, you know, you didn't see coming. And yeah. like the way that they speak to each other. And there's just like, uh, like the sort of understood uh, Muslim customs and stuff that, you know, mm -hmm. that he doesn't take the time to explain. It's just like... Part of his deal culture and it. stuff, it's right? How okay. it is. So he just writes it in, and that's that. I fucking love that. About I love it. that too. Yeah, and it, it, you learn it as you go, uh, which is part of why I think it's getting better. Three issues in, I feel like I have a better understanding of these people and how they relate to each other, even on a day-to-day -day basis. You mm -hmm. know, so it, it's I'm getting more and more enriched into the world that he's created here. Yeah, uh, which helps a lot, but. Also, just the character drama is so tightly woven. Uh, seeing it, seeing all these pieces not unravel, but but slowly wrap around each other and in, into a, you know, something that you can grab onto. It's yeah, really awesome. It almost, I'm gonna say, kind of reminds me of Brubaker, like mm -hmm. something that he would do. I yeah, can totally agreed. see him writing this book and it being about the same, mm -hmm. which is like a huge compliment. Yeah. to King. Yeah, I, I agree. He's definitely in like the Brew Baker Rucka grouping of very terse uh, dialogue driven character dramas, right? Mm. Uh, and, and we see it in his other work that we read as well, but this one it's really clear because it's, yeah. it's not fantastical. Uh, and also the art is getting tighter as yeah. well. You can tell that, uh, what's his name again? Oh yeah, I'm not going to try to say it again. Uh, you can that tell guy. that he's getting really comfortable with the, the lead characters mm -hmm. and we're getting what we usually get around this time in a series where you get to issue three, issue four with the same guy drawn where uh, he's able to put, I think, more expression into the characters. We see a little more body language or mm -hmm. at least... And it's also probably our familiarity with the characters, like we read the body language better, but I, I think it's being drawn better too, and the sure. facial expressions. Mm -hmm. He's just getting more comfortable with the characters. Right. And, you know, the more and more you think about how these people would act mm -hmm. and conduct themselves and stuff, yeah, it just sort of fleshes itself out. And then so being able to, cool. to, cool. to put it into the page as well as the other thing, because, you know, it's an actual physical practice that he has to right. do to learn the characters and... So this person would be very modest, but how do I portray that modesty you know, on the page? Right, right. Uh, impressive stuff. Uh, also, I think this is going to make a hell of a trade paperback. Mm -hmm. uh, it's supposed to go eight issues. I don't know if... That's it? Eight issues, yeah. And it's done. Bruh, so, come on. Um, but that's cool. Like he, he wants it to be eight issues. It's a mini series or whatever you call it. Uh, so he's got a story he's telling. We're mm -hmm. a third of the way through. I feel like this is the end of the first act. Mm -hmm. Is exactly what this feels like. It, pulling the hood off the guy. You learn. You see them together. We get the the surprise twist. At, you know, sure. Two thirds of the way through this issue, 
this is the end of the first act. Now we're moving into the second act. Uh, and it's, it's awesome, and it's going to be really good in trade. Really good. Excited. Yeah. This is Paper Girls number five by Vaughn, Chang, Wilson, and Fletcher. That is really nice of them to put that there for me. It makes it easy. So there was a battle with some weird shit and the scene on the spaceship with healing bugs. And we may be like getting somewhere as far as like knowing what the hell's actually going on. Mm -hmm. Like, and I've said that before, I feel like, about this book, but now I feel like it's actually like being cemented into place. Yeah, it's getting a lot more clear, especially this issue. Last issue, they uh, Vaughn kind of started setting the groundwork for us to understand what's happening. Uh, filling in the bits and and now we're getting to the meat of who everybody is i i think right. next issue is going to be the turning point where we move from uh this must be a longer series because because this is yeah. the beginning of that that move into the second act here uh where we're finally you're learning everyone how they connect to each other and now we can get into the the actual meat and potatoes of the story mm, yeah exactly yeah Instead of just uh, wandering around with a gun and trying to figure out what the hell's going on. Which, I mean, the way this ends, like, the next issue, there is going to be some, wait, so what? Yeah. You know? But, yeah. uh, I mean, the next one's six, so I guess it makes sense, like, in trade form. Mm -hmm. You know, the end of the first trade is when you're, you know, first starting to kind of get into things. I'm right. trying to remember if why The Last Man was kind of like that. It's been so long since I've read the first trade of that. I think it, I think it was. If, if I remember correctly, it was pretty... Uh, a lot of scrambling about for the first trade, really. Mm -hmm. uh, which is basically what this is. Very reactionary, which is normal for a good three-act story. Mm -hmm. you, you want that first act to be very reactionary, and then the second act, they, you take charge and, yeah. and, and respond to things. And I, I feel like that's exactly where we're going now. So uh, how do you feel about this? I know you were pretty iffy on it when we started. It's getting better. Um, there were a couple parts in there that made me laugh, and it was mainly just because of like clever word choice and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I mean, Brian K. Vaughan's always like really clever, mm -hmm. and I think maybe before I was disappointed in the lack of cleverness in this, mm -hmm. uh, but I feel like it's really starting to come through. I uh, can I say that the lack of cleverness is, in a way, the thing that I think is most clever about this one for him. Does that make sense? I know mean, yeah, it I sounds mean, stupid on the surface, but I don't know if he's really that into himself, though. To like think about it, like, this is what people expect from me. He might be. I mean, well, he's done a lot of these long narrative form things uh, where he has a lot of clever dialogue and interest, deep introspective characters, and here we don't have that. It's it's very it's a very big departure. I yeah, say from it's it's a very thing. much just it. It's the most like Runaways I think we've had from him since Runaways. Runaways is pretty clever though. It, right, but that's the thing. It, Runaways even had a lot of that cleverness and a lot of pop culture. Mm -hmm. I, I guess this has pop culture in it, uh, but but it's just not the same. These characters are not clever people. They're all sure. they're not old enough to be right clever. Really. Right, yeah. they all just kind of say the thing you would expect a kid to say, you know? Yeah. Which I know a lot of people don't really like that about this book. Right. Um, I mean, I know a couple people who were like really big Brian Cable and fans and always try to get me to read Saga and shit and they said they picked this up and they're like, what the hell is this? Yeah. But uh, I think it's getting better. I do too. The, the I don't want to drop it anymore. So. I mean, well, that's good. It, I like the coloring in this more than I like the art itself. Mm. I... At first, I really liked this art, and I still think it does a good job of of being very clear who's who, and it's got a nice aesthetic that's its own thing that I haven't really seen before. Uh, the panel layouts are really nice, but the art's just not incredible for some reason. It it feels a little weird for a Brian K. Vaughn book, I think, is, is the thing. Like, it's such a departure from mm -hmm. the sort of people he normally works with, but the coloring is really cool. Yeah, uh, it's these like very good, interesting choices. Yeah, very tonally uh, varied, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty and neat. It almost kind of like works with uh, 
the title itself and just the characters in it and stuff. Because mm-hmm. even as you were thumbing through it now, I noticed there's like a shit ton of like pinks and purples and stuff, mm-hmm. which is like little girl colors, you know? Right, so especially like, Jesus... especially like late '80s little girl colors. Right. It's all yeah. like hyper color and neons uh, and yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, so the coloring, I think, really really ties the art together. So good job, Matt Wilson. Anything else on that one? Nah. Oh, also, I think this would be really good in trade. <laughs> I just want to say that because it yeah. waiting a month for each little piece of information is a little bit irritating with it. Uh, I think yeah, writing wise, s- it's not that dense, so right, yeah, it feels like well, it's a two ninety nine book. It feels like a two ninety nine book. Yeah, I feel like when it's all done, if like if people out there like Brian K. Vaughn and they haven't been picking this up just wait and yeah I would wait. Get especially it. it's on image so you know the trade's gonna come out quick right know? i mean there's right no exactly reason unless you just want to have them have and the issues i with as nice as the singles are i bet the trade will be really cool too so you know probably. there's there's that as well so just wait for the trade if you haven't gotten into this yet because it'll probably be a lot better in that format i almost wish we would have waited for trade but now that would be even worse because we've read six and then wait for the next one for like six months would be awful. Uh, but we should talk about it because that might be something we could do with as, as decompressed as this one is and with as heavy as our pull list is. It might make sense to read number six, see if it's a good place to jump off for a while and then pick up, and then pick up the trade, the trade for, the next, for the next set. Just because we don't get very much each issue. Sure. Well, we can discuss it. We will. All right, last one that we have uh, is Batgirl number 48. This is Fletcher Stewart, Tar. Babs Tar is back, thank God. And La Point. Uh, oh, and also Luridge or Luride DG. It's Luridge. Batgirl and Black Canary investigate her uh, screwed up memory her her nightmares as well mm-hmm. um this is this is like the kookiest story i know man like it's like maybe like hannah barbarish like scooby-doo kind of but like with realer threats right <laughs> right that's exactly what i was thinking like either hannah barbara or maybe it almost verges on like Batman sixty six. Yeah, Adam's family, or yeah, Adam's family. Just any of those like really kooky stories where uh, the 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 premise of the bad guys is really goofy and really just a pun. Yeah, so it's just let's have a funny pun and then we'll make bad guys for it and then we'll do like a third of the comic about that pun. Uh, which is a commitment that you used to see in Silver Age comics all the time, and we don't see anymore, so that's kind of fun. But then also just the way they solve the mystery mm-hmm. is is very, like you said, Scooby-Doo-ish. It, it's like, what? How? Yeah. Really? But it still It almost works. made me think, well, I was reading this because, you know, her, her mind's getting, like, fucked with and stuff. That's the whole, like, premise of most of this. Maybe... She just thought she was fighting all these villains who were very, like, cliche, mm. you know, because somebody just had to sit there and say, okay, fucking today she's going to fight player one and player two, <laughs> and she's going to defeat him this way. All right, here you go. Um, I don't know if that's the case or not. I think maybe not because this is, I mean, it's calling back. There's a lot of callback to, like, earlier issues, mm. like, before we were even reading. Right. Um so I think it's cool that we came on at the point where there's all this long-form storytelling coming together. Mm-hmm. But it is interesting. Yeah, just really odd storytelling. But I think it works for the book. And uh, Babs Tar is back, so at least we get like this re- all these really great uh, expressions and, and all the, the wonderful body language and all that that we had before. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, I can slog through the goofiness to get to the meat of the the character interactions, right. you know. Yeah, I was kind of afraid because uh, her nightmare dude kind of looks like Bloom a little mm-hmm. bit, mm-hmm. and I thought that they were just gonna do like some tie-in. Where, oh yeah, yeah, because it would kind of make sense. It would, you know. I mean, they talked about D 
Batgirling all the titles or whatever, so you'd start with Batgirl. But right, right. But no, yeah. it wasn't expected at all. No, uh, and yeah, we like I said, we still have everything that m- has made this title good that we've enjoyed. Uh, it's light and it's heavy at the same time. Yeah, yeah, it's really the only way to describe it. I think. I think you you know that there. It's goofy, but with real consequences. It's it's strange. It's an odd mix, but it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. This is another like when I got to the last page, I was like, fuck. <laughs> let, let me see. Like, knowing yeah. that she was, I mean, oh yeah, oh yeah, she's an important person, so she's gonna be fine. But fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah. Uh, good book. I, I I still really like it. And I, that last issue that we had last month was a little less than stellar, but it's oh, but that had the interesting twist in it where we were like, oh shit, shit's about to get real. And what happened in this one? Right. Shit got real. Right. Well, really weird. But yeah. Uh, all in all, I, most of what we had this week was pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. It's yeah. a good week of comics. Uh, see some chairman we could do in a couple places, but we can talk about that soon. Yeah, we will. Uh, in fact, we'll be talking about that on Monday, won't we? No, because this is February. Well, yeah. Since we've already read February books, it'd be kind of hard to say, well, you know, at the end of January, this book was really good, so we have to keep it on. So, yeah, we'll be cutting shit. I see what you mean. Uh, Based off of this week's performance. Right, yeah. So, but yes, we will be talking about that on Monday because that's when we do our poll list monthly review. Mm-hmm. Uh, we go back and we look at our favorites and not so good stuff. And uh, we do what every person who has a poll list does, but we do it on the show. We talk about what we liked and what we didn't like. Uh, we talk about whether we want to cut some things uh, because the poll list we do on this show more or less, aside from just a couple of titles each, is our poll list, right? It's yeah. it's really the things that we're reading each month. So we we just do this and we talk about it and figure out what to get rid of uh, and what to keep. And we also talk about like our favorites. Uh, we go back over them again and talk about them in a larger context, usually uh, as it relates to the industry and what we're reading and, and how we feel about that. Mm-hmm. So come back and check that out with us. Uh, and then the following Monday, we're going to talk about Adventure Time, right? Yeah, the first trade from that. So I've been excited for that. I've been really curious about that because I like the show, mm-hmm. you know, so if the comic's anything like the show, I'll probably be into it. But I'm more interested to see if uh, the medium brings anything to the story. Sure. You know, or if uh, it's slightly different because of that or, mm-hmm. you know, just reflections on that. Sure. And you're a fan of the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've seen a few epi- this episodes of the show and I've enjoyed what I saw well enough, but I'm not somebody who's watched a lot of it. I've yeah, seen a few like episodes. Seasons of it. Right. Yeah. I've just seen a couple episodes of it and uh, am, a, am a casual enjoyer of it if I see it on. Uh, so this time I will be the fish out of water. Yes. I, aside from that, we do this every Wednesday or every we release this every Thursday morning because we obviously have to get our books and read them. And we shoot it and then give it to you Thursday morning. So you can come back and check that out next week. Uh, Facebook, Twitter. Also next week, though, we will be a day late because I will not be available Wednesday. This is the first time hearing of this. Right. Uh, it's a big surprise. <laughs> what a twist! <laughs> uh, so we, we will actually be releasing that next week on Friday morning, uh, which we normally never say that on the episode, but I know this time. So Yeah. It'll be warning. F- it'll be it'll be Friday morning instead of Thursday morning. You you'll have to wait one extra day. Other than that, yeah, Facebook, Twitter, like, subscribe, all comment. the other things. Give us some comments about what you're reading, uh, and go away now. Bye. <laughs>